you get a woot woot? Sweet. Always wanted to do that. All right. We're going to kick it off with the devotion here. I'll tell you guys a little bit about my internship later. So, to the youth, to everybody, uh, I'm really glad you guys are here. I'm really glad I'm here. It's awesome to be here. Um, God's calling, I think, you know, it's, it's great. It's uh, awesome that you guys know what you're doing or have an idea of the call, you know, to understand that people are called. Um, I guess I'll share a little bit of my testimony here. Um, growing up, raised in the church, um, mom and dad were, you know, great parents, great childhood. Um, I was always kind of like that adrenaline junkie kind of kid, you know, looking for a thrill or always lighting stuff on fire or getting into trouble, something along those lines. Um, I'd say when I was 13, I probably, that's when I started getting into trouble, trouble, you know, like with um, neighborhood kids, you know, vandalizing, that turned into, you know, other teenage crap like uh, drinking and getting high, stuff like that. Um, so that continued in through high school. Um, senior year of high school got pretty bad. I ended up going to um, rehab for some stuff. Uh, so after that, going into freshman year of college, um, you can imagine what my parents were feeling uh, for the parents out there. Uh, so went into college. My grades were still good. Um, uh, so it got even worse. Uh, got into, you know, selling drugs, doing drugs every day. Um, just not headed down the road you want your son or daughter to be heading down. Um, so freshman year, summer freshman year of college, um, that's when I got, I, hard to describe, I, I called it an epiphany at the time, but it was more like God was like, yo, like kind of woke me up from a sleepwalk I was in and, um, just rocked my world. Um, like I said earlier, I was, you know, an, an adrenaline junkie kind of. I've been skydiving, I've played all kinds of sports, jumped off all kinds of cliffs, I've been high on all kinds of drugs, but nothing, nothing in this earth compares to the feeling of being in the presence of God. And that is something that you, there's a lot of words in our language, but you could put all of them together and you wouldn't even... Yeah, you guys get what I'm saying? It's it's awesome. It's just like that, um, somebody said yesterday, the poke in the chest. It's like a kick in the chest. Like, it's, it's really cool. So that, looking back on that, you know, I thought that was an epiphany at the time, but it turned out that was a call. You know, I, I was feeling this, feeling that I've never felt before in my entire life. Nothing in my life has ever given me that feeling to this day. Um, so I knew that I had to do something with it. I wasn't just going to sit on it. Um, something had to be done. So I guess that's why I'm here. Um, so let me, uh, let me read some scripture here that uh, really speaks to me. First, we're gonna, I'm going to turn to Proverbs 12. If you know, if you guys got your bibles, get them out. If you want to follow along, it always helps me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Proverbs 12. If I'm on a time limit, sorry, it's not happening. <laughs> you guys are in for a little, a little reading here. Um, thumbs up if you're there, everybody. Cool, awesome. To learn, you must love discipline. It is stupid to hate correction. The Lord approves of those who are good, but he condemns those who plan wickedness. Wickedness never brings stability. Only the godly have deep roots. 
A worthy wife is her husband's joy and crown. A shameful wife saps his strength. The plans of the godly are just. The advice of the wicked is treacherous. The words of the wicked are like a murderous ambush, but the words of the godly save lives. The wicked perish and are gone, but the children of the godly stand firm. Everyone admires a person with good sense, but a warped mind is despised. It is better to be a nobody with a servant than to be self-important but have no food. The godly are concerned for, well, for the welfare of their animals, but even the kindness of the wicked is cruel. Hard work means prosperity. Only fools idle away their time. Thieves are jealous of each other's loot, while the godly bear their own fruit. The wicked are trapped by their own words, but the godly escape such trouble. People can get many good things by the words they say. The work of their hands also gives them many benefits. Fools think they need no advice, but the wise listen to others. A fool is quick-tempered, but a wise person stays calm when insulted. An honest witness tells the truth. A false witness tells lies. Some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. Truth stands the test of time. Lies are soon exposed. Deceit fills the heart, fills hearts that are plotting evil. Joy fills hearts that are planning peace. No real harm befalls the godly, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. The Lord hates those who don't keep their word, but he delights in those who do. Wise people don't make a show of their knowledge, but fools broadcast their folly. Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. Worry weighs a person down. An encouraging word cheers a person up. The godly give good advice to their friends. The wicked lead them astray. Lazy people don't even cook the game they catch, but the diligent make use of everything they find. The way of the godly leads to life. Their path does not lead to death. So that, that to me just really speaks to me, especially Proverbs being a book to, you know, a younger crowd. Um, I mean, anyone can use that, like the, the passages in there. Um, you know, you have all these um, people around that are older than you. Something that I learned um, when starting my walk is, you know, it's, it's great to have this uh, mentorship or discipleship with somebody. Somebody that'll, that you can bounce ideas off, bounce worries off, bounce, um, you know, just life off of them. And especially having someone who is a Christian do that with you, that's huge. So I highly recommend doing that because it's helped me immensely throughout um, my walk with God. Let me just turn the ear to one more. Um, we're going to go to John 15. This is uh, Jesus teaching about the vine and the branches. And um, these are Jesus' words here. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned for great fruitfulness by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful apart from me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who parts from me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you stay joined to me and my words remain in you, you may ask any requests you like, and it will be granted. My true disciples produce much fruit. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey me, you remain in my love. 
just as I obey my Father and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I command you to love one, love each other in the same way that I love you. And here is how to measure it. The greatest love is shown when people lay down their lives for their friends. You are my friends if you obey me. I no longer call you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. I command you to love each other. So again, that John 15 really inspires me, and there's a, there's a lot there in, in both of those passages you could digest on. But um, I want to read all of those those two passages, just because there's just a lot of good stuff that can apply. Um, right there at the end there, I command you to love each other. That, excuse me, that to me is pretty straightforward. Um, love each other. I really like this part too. Um, well, it's all good, but you didn't choose me, I chose you. That's uh, Jesus just telling his boys that, you know, it's, you know, you didn't say, oh, I picked, yeah, let's go hang with Jesus. You know, it was predestined, already figured out. Um, when you're in the womb, before you're in the womb, when we were dust, um, God has a plan for you. God has a call for you. Um, so, yeah. Amen? Amen.